what, what is relevant to normal work practices and take that and expand on it more. So just for those who don't know, H2K is one of the larger reseller of software in Australia. We do a whole bunch of AutoCAD solutions and non-AutoCAD solutions as well. So we do quite a lot with Microsoft as well, hence why, why this webcast happens. Um, what I've discussed with John, what we will do for more advanced topics on AutoCAD. And the reason this one came up is that it applies to many practical applications. So we're interested in all kinds of feedback on this. We will allow time at the end for questions and answers. But please um, interrupt and type in questions as we go on. So um, there is a training course that this, this session applies to as well. We're calling it AutoCAD for Power Users. We used to have a few separate courses, each of which did a little bit of what people wanted. And we've amalgamated those into one proper course that, that's more relevant. So again, all feedback is relevant on that. And I will pass on to John and leave him go through the technical details. Thanks for that, Sean. Hi, right, guys. Uh, welcome to the webcast. Uh, today, I'm going to be focusing um, on data extraction and data, data linking uh, using Microsoft Excel. Okay, so basically how to link a Microsoft Excel uh, table to your, to your AutoCAD drawing, um, but also how to extract information from your AutoCAD files in order to uh, automate your schedules. Okay, there's a few different examples that we'll go through here. Uh, block schedules, uh, coordinate reports, um, even drawing issue schedules, and um, some area schedules as well. So basically we'll be taking information from blocks, taking information about geometry, taking information for about uh, information from uh, your actual drawing files themselves as well. Okay. At the end, um, I'll take you through the AutoCAD for Power Users course uh, overview, a uh, list of uh, all the various topics that will be covered in that uh, course. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump into the software. Um, as I said, if you've got uh, any questions, there is a uh, comments section that we'll be keeping an eye on, so just type them in there. Um, I will uh, go over them more towards the end of the uh, webcast. So um, the first one that I want to do is just how to link up Microsoft Excel. Uh, so in here I've got um, just a, uh, a floor plan of a, of a building, and I've got a room uh, finishes schedule uh, done in Microsoft Excel that I want to link in. So um, just before I bring in, I'll uh, just go into paper space and I'll put my uh, Excel table on this. So the tool that you're looking for is uh, you'll find it in your insert tab. And over here on the far right, uh, you'll see this linking and extraction panel. So uh, the first thing we want to do is create a data link. Okay, Brings up this dialog box here. I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call it... Um, room schedule. And hit OK. Now, uh, my next dialog box prompts me to go and browse for a Microsoft Excel file. I've got one in here. And I'll hit Open. Now, you get a few options um, of what exactly you want to link. If it was a multi-sheet Excel file, you do have um, options uh, here to link to separate sheets. Now, this one just has one particular one. Um, and you can also link to a range, okay, a range of cells. So I'm going to link to a range of um, cell A1 to, I think, E20 is uh, pretty much my full, full scale there. Um, and I'm going to hit OK. And I'll hit OK. Just to say preview is too large here. Sometimes you, you might just get that, and sometimes you get a preview, but it's not, it's not usually important. Now, I'm going to hit OK. So it doesn't uh, miraculously, using this method, um, insert the table directly onto the sheet. What you can do from there is, in your Annotate tab, if you click on the large table button just to insert one, you have an option here on the uh, left-hand side from its uh, start table from scratch or from a data link. And when I go into that drop-down list, I'll find Room Schedule. Okay. Room schedule, you'll notice everything on the right-hand side will start graying itself out because it's being controlled by Microsoft Excel. Now, I'll hit OK. And 
there we have it. Okay. Now, um, this is a live link. Okay, so you can have somebody working on Excel, changing this, and it will constantly remain update, updated on your sheet. We can also work backwards as well, where we can change the table in AutoCAD, and it will update uh, in Microsoft Excel. Also, just on the left-hand side here, you'll see um, my XREF manager. You'll see that that room schedule is actually uh, highlighted in, in there. What I can do to quickly open that file, I can right-click, hit Open, and it should open up Microsoft Excel for me with that table. Okay, so what you can do in here is uh, you can use the power of Excel um, to name and number things or change anything up. So maybe I'll just uh, take off that prefix. Um, maybe I'll go, I'll just go renumber them just plain one, two, three. Oops. There we go. Okay. Um, the beauty about this is you can have somebody that doesn't even know how to use AutoCAD filling out uh, this sort of information and then link it straight back to the drawing. Okay. Now, in order to for it to update in the drawing, I'm just going to have to save that file and just close it up. When you get back into Microsoft Excel or in AutoCAD, sorry, you can select your uh, select your table, right click, update table data links from the menu. And we can see now that all our uh, room numbers have gone and changed up. Now, if you want to work backwards, it's, it's a little trickier. It's, it's obviously easier to work in Microsoft Excel. Um, but when I select the table, what you can kind of see beside my cursor, it might be a bit small on your screen, is a small little padlock and uh, a little change just to indicate uh, that it's linked. So what I need to do is unlock these, these columns. So I can unlock select a, an entire column, go up into my ribbon up here, and just say unlocked. Okay, that way I can come in and I can change that to whatever it is I want. Okay, I'll just change these top two. You get the idea. Now, to push it back into Microsoft Excel with them changes, I just need to um, select my table again, right click, and write data links to external source in that shortcut menu. Click on that. You can see in my command line down at the bottom, it says one data link written out successfully. Okay. So let me just go and open that guy up, select it, or I'll select it in my XREF manager here, hit open, and there you go, in Microsoft Excel, my two cells have changed. Okay. So, uh, that's how we uh, link up a Microsoft Excel sheet with um, with AutoCAD. You get options um, when you want to, to e-transmit um, a drawing. You can you have an option in the e-transmit dialog box to include the Microsoft Excel sheets uh, along with the e-transmit as well, if you like. Okay. Um, you can also see down the bottom of the screen you do get updates um, similar to Xrefs um, when something changes in them sheets. And there we go. Okay. Now. Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on questions. Okay, next up, um, I'm going to take a look at uh, extracting information from geometry in the drawing, which might be of use to you. In model space here, what I've got is uh, I've got a whole series of polylines um, that are running around the areas of uh, these buildings. Okay, so I'll try and highlight a couple of them. There's one, there's two, three, and so on. Okay, um, I've got them all set up on, on separate layers. Um, the layers, if I can show them to you, I've got a separate layer for um, each of them areas, the area of the deck, the hall, the kitchen, laundry, and so on. Now, you can set these layers not to print if you, if you so wish as well. So I'm going to go back into my sheet because that's where I'm going to put uh, my table. So in my Insert tab, over here on the far right-hand side, we get this option for Extract Data right here. Now, um, there's a few different steps to this. You can see in my first dialog box, it's uh, step one of eight. Um, the idea is here, though, that we can just kind of create it once 
we can create a template file out of it. And anytime you want to do, let's say, an area schedule on another project, you can really whiz through um, all of the A steps. But for now, I'm going to do it from scratch. So I'm just going to hit next. Um, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, area schedule. I've already got one in there. Um, so I'm just going to save over this guy. Now, when you're extracting information from, um, from drawings, you can um, obviously do it on the current drawing that you're in. Um, but you can also choose to add drawings. So this was you know, a 10-story building, and each story was on a different file. You could add them separate uh, files uh, there if you wish. You can also add an entire folder worth of drawings if you want, and we'll see that in a later example. I've got some settings down at the bottom here. Just I'll just take a quick look at them. Um, so we can extract information about blocks. Um, even if they're XREFed in, we can take information from XREFs. We can include XREFs in block counts if that's practical. Um, not really in, 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 most, uh, in most senses. Um, but down at the bottom, where do you want to take information from? Just objects in model space or all objects in the drawing? So model space and paper space. So I'm going to go with all objects here. And I'll hit OK. Now, I'm just going to go next. So what I get is a list of pretty much everything that's uh, in that drawing, all blocks, all geometry, and so on. Okay. For this particular example, I'm going to come down to the bottom. I don't want to display um, blocks. I just want non-blocks. Okay. So lines, circles, rectangles, text, and so on. I'm going to uncheck all. And all I want to do is take information out about polylines within the drawing. And the beauty of the live demo says uncheck all tick. Sorry, it just wouldn't tick for some reason. OK, so pulling all the polylines out of the drawing. When I go into the next uh, step, what I get is pretty much every single piece of information that I could potentially take out um, of them polylines. And there is a lot of stuff in here. And most of the stuff we don't need uh, in this particular example that we'll see a little later. So on the right-hand side, I've got a filter. I just want to take out information to do with the geometry and general. Okay, general is going to give me the layer. So I'll uncheck all again, give me the area, and give me the layer that it's sitting on. Okay, I could also get length if you want to get perimeter lengths of rooms and so on. I'm going to hit next. Now, so this is pretty much a preview of what my um, file is going to look like, and you can see that it's a little bit messy. First of all, I've got the count column over here in the left-hand side. I don't need to see that. It's just telling me that I've got one polyline. I've also got the name column, which just says polyline, so I'm just going to uninclude that. I'm going to reshuffle these two over so I get the layer and then the area. Now, obviously, I'm picking up every single layer in the drawing, so what we can do, I'm going to right-click in there, and I've got some filter options. So um, when we go into filtering, uh, what I can do is untick any of the layers that I don't need. There we go. And I think that's right. There we go. I'll hit OK. And up at the top here, I've got uh, area. So it's given me the area in square millimeters to four decimal places, which is far from ideal. But you can right click, and you have an option here for set column data format. Now, I want it as a decimal number. I want a precision of, we'll say, be two decimal places. And I've got additional format down at the bottom here where I can put in my conversion factor. So it's 0 0.00001, and that will give it to me in square meters. I've got options for putting in a suffix there as well. Um, if I want, I can put in meter squared. Leave it off for now. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Now. Another one or two things that you can do in here is if you wanted to um, get a total of all room areas, I can right click and I can insert a totals footer and give me some. Okay, so there's the uh, total square meters. There's a lot more you can do with formatting and so on, but we'll get to, get to that in a, a few later examples. For now, I'm just going to hit next. Uh, 
Okay, so in uh, in this dialog box is very simple. You can either insert the um, table just onto the drawing, but also at the same time you can actually push it out to Microsoft Excel if that's what you want. If you're going to work in Excel in opposed to AutoCAD, I'm going to leave that out for now. I'm just going to put it onto the drawing. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to use this uh, standard table style that I've got set up. Obviously, you can use your own table styles if you've got them. Finish. And have I got a little bit of space to put it in? And there we go. OK, I'm just going to move that guy over a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's your area schedule. Now, these guys do. Um, update themselves. Okay, so as polylines get bigger, um, this area will change. So we'll keep an eye on our square meters down here, 196. I'm going to go into model space, and I'm going to make one of the rooms bigger, maybe the uh, deck down here. I'm just going to use my stretch command, make the deck a little bigger. Okay, I might have to move the railing and so on there, but that should do it. In my table, what I can do then, select this, right-click, update table data links, and your areas change. Okay, um, so that's one way of tackling it with a different layer for for each um, for each area. Um, that could get a bit messy because you could end up with um, an awful lot of layers. But you can also do the same thing where you take out information for um, hatching. So if you had all the rooms hatched maybe in different colors and so on. You could um, pull out the area of each hatch. You could rename the colors to room names, and that uh, will give you the same result um, without having to create different layers. So there's a few ways that you could tackle that. OK, so that's one example. Um, the next example is we're going to focus just on blocks. So I'm going to go into this drawing here where we've got uh, the uh, a building that we're going to do a door schedule. Okay, so pulling information out of blocks is probably one of the most um, popular ways of using this tool. I've got a whole series of doors. I've got three different door types, a double, a bifold, and a single door. And all of these doors have attributes. Okay, so if I double click on these guys, they've been filled out with a series of invisible attributes. Okay, so uh, the width, the height, manufacturer, cost, and so on. If I take a look at it just in the block editor, that's what the door looks like. Okay, So when you're putting in attributes, and again, it's something that we do look over in the, um, the Power Users course, um, you can make them so that they're invisible. Okay, And you can just add um, I guess metadata um, to your blocks and then schedule them out. So let me close block editor here. OK, so I'm going to go back into my sheet here. I'm going to go extract data. I'm going to create a new one. I'll call it door schedule and hit save. So when I create a new one there, it creates this uh, DXE file. Okay, and that's your template file. So when you go through all these eight steps, um, if you ever want to use this, do the same door schedule in another drawing or project, um, you can just start with that DXE file and you can skip through all the steps, and it's going to make life uh, a lot easier. In some cases, you can even have these data extractions um, permanently linked to your template file. So um, I'm going to stick with just this one drawing here again. I'm going to hit Next. Now, in this instance, what I want to do is um, I'm going to untick this guy down here. I'm going to tick um, Display Blocks Only to filter down my list. I'm going to uncheck all. And there's my three door blocks, door, bifold, and French. And I'm going to hit Next. OK, again, a big list of information. All I want here is information about the attributes of that block. So I've got a filter list on the right-hand side. Untick everything bar. Attributes, and there they are. OK, I'm going to bring them all in. So I'm going to hit Next. Now let me make this a little bigger. There's our uh, drawing schedule as it is. So if you want to um, shuffle this around the place, uh, you can. So if you want to maybe reference number to be first in the list, followed by name, count, put height and width together, and maybe I'll stick cost uh, down at the end. Okay, so just push in and pull in the, uh, the headings up at the top.
top will do that for you. Now what you can also do in here is you can start introducing things like formulas. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a uh, cost formula. So each door has got an individual cost. So I'm going to get totals. So I'm just going to right click in here. You get an option for insert formula column. And we can call it, uh, oops, total cost. On the right hand side, I can say get cost, multiply it by count. You have an option here to hit validate. It'll tell you if it's a valid equation. And I'll hit OK. And there's my cost column. Now, uh, again, we get four decimal places and so on. I'm going to right click here again, set column data format, and now I can actually set it to a currency, set it to the dollar, zero decimal places, and hit OK. I can also right click, insert a totals footer, sum, and you get the total cost of all your doors. Okay, So there's an example where you can use a formula in here as well. And that's about it. That's all I want to do in this in this particular one. So I'm just going to hit next. I'm just going to insert it straight into the uh, drawing. Next, I'll use my standard table style, and I'll just hit finish. And there we go. Now, um, as you add or remove doors, so sorry, let's just see total cost of 2,600. Um, might just maybe. Copy the entire project inside my table, right click, update table data links, and your count and your cost and so on will update. Okay. Now, if you guys are using dynamic blocks as well, uh, if you've got dynamic blocks, uh, let's say doors or windows or something like that, that are um, designed to get wider or shorter. Um, you can actually pull that information about parameters that you put in your, into your dy uh, dynamic blocks. You can pull them straight into your tables as well. Um, and that example I show in the, in the Power Users course. Now, uh, next up, um, sticking, with, uh, sticking with blocks, you can actually start pulling um, x, y coordinates or z coordinates out of a drawing, really handy for guys doing civil and structural um, type drafting. So in here I've got a floor plan, I've got a whole series of, I've got three different types of columns uh, in here, and I'm going to pull out their X and Y coordinates. So I'll jump back into my sheet, just a blank sheet here. Use my extract data tool again, create a new one. I'm going to call it column schedule, and I'll just replace the one that I've got in there already. And I'm going to go next. So I'm going to filter out. I just want blocks only. I'm going to uncheck all. And my blocks for these, the columns are P1, P2, and P5 uh, columns. So that's just the name of the three different uh, types. And I'll hit next. Now, all I want in here is information to do with the geometry of the drawing. Okay, so I'm going to right click, uncheck all, and you can bring in your position X and position Y. If you're working in, you know, 3D, working for, with survey drawings, for example, if things do have a Z coordinate, you can bring in the Z coordinate as well. Uh, I just know for a fact that they're all, all, all the Z uh, positions are zero uh, in this particular drawing. So I'm going to hit next again. There we go. We've got your count column, which I'm going to get rid of in there. Um, I'm going to position them by their x coordinate. So just by clicking on the top uh, headings, you can position, uh, you can reorder them by x, y, or by name or numerical order or whatever it is you want. Um, you can set column data format. You could have it at meters or whatever it may be. I'm just going to hit next, insert, next, standard table style, and finish. 
and there you go. There's the position of all of your uh, columns within the project. And again, just like the other examples, they will update as things start moving around. Okay. Now, um, one other example that I want to do is just a, a data extraction that's that's going over multiple multiple uh, multiple drawing files. So what I want to do is do a, a, a drawing register, okay? Um, similar to what we did with uh, the blocks here and with uh, with the door example, is we pulled out information about the block, okay? Um, a title block is exactly is exactly the same thing. It's a block with attributes, so we can pull that information straight out into a schedule. So I'm going to go extract data, create a new one. I'm going to call it drawing schedule and save. Now this time I've got an option where I'm just going to imagine that this is maybe just a cover sheet and I don't, I'm not really bothered about information about this particular title block. Up at the top you can choose to not include the current drawing. Okay, so if it was just a cover sheet or something like that. Over here I'm going to add an entire, I could, I could add the drawings manually, but I'm going to add an entire folder worth of drawings. I'm going to go and find it, and it's going to go back up one. I'm going to use this entire folder. So this would be your project drawing folder, and hit open. A couple of really nice options in here is um, this top one. You can automatically include new drawings added to this folder. So in theory, what you could do at the very, very start of a project, even if you've just got one drawing going, you could create this. Uh, drawing schedule, just with one drawing, and as, got, as more drawings are added to the project, your drawing register will continuously add and fill itself out. You also have the option to include subfolders, so if you've got that folder broken down, um, you can cho choose to include or not include them subfolders. Just be careful of that one because you might have, I don't know, a, an archive folder or something in there. You may not want to include that. You've also options down here for utilizing wildcards, so you could say, um, just extract the information about drawings that have got the word plan in them, or elevation, or tender, or something like that. But um, we're not going to do that just here. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, uh, down towards the bottom, um, there's a list of uh, all of our drawings. So we've got 43 drawings in here. And I'm just going to hit Next. Now, I might get the odd warning up here about uh, drawings not being scaled properly. Um, that's just some of these drawings may have been once imperial drawings that were scaled up. So it just gives me a warning saying that some of the blocks mightn't be scaled correctly, but that isn't going to make any difference to what we're doing now. So all I want to do is take out information to do with the A3 title block. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to hit uncheck all, and just select the A3 title block that's on each sheet. I'm going to hit next. Now, uh, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to uncheck all. Now, there's a few things that you can bring in here. If it's just going to be a typical drawing register, you more than likely will just want uh, the attributes. Okay, so drawn by, checked by, and so on. Um, I'll bring in a few of them. I'll bring them all in. Issue date, uh, project name, project number, scale, and so on. Now, what you can also do, let's say from a, a CAD management point of view, you could choose to include some more information um, about the drawing itself. Okay, so there's a little tick box on the right-hand side about drawing. Um, so as well as having the attributes in there, you could also bring in something like file last saved by. Okay, so you'll have a running schedule and you'll see exactly who saved the file last and who was working on it. Um, you could also have something like file size. You could have file location, where it's stored on your network. Um, file name, because when you think about it, it's only going to bring the, uh, let's say, project or sheet title of the title block, but the file name where that sheet is contained might not be the same. In my case, I think it more or less is, but you could choose a file name. Also, if you want to kind of control um, how long the project has been running on, or if you're doing contract drafting, down at the bottom there, you have an option for total editing time. 
Africa, and you'll get that total editing time in, in minutes. So I'm going to hit next. I might get that warning up again here in a second, but don't worry about that. Now, um, I'm going to get the, rid of the name and the count column again. And I'll have a little reshuffle of this guy, a little bit bigger. Um, so putting in things like drawing number, I can arrange them by number as well on the left-hand side. Um, if you do arrange them by number, if a new drawing is added, let's say um, drawing 104B, it will slot itself in here. It doesn't just tack itself onto the end. Okay, and I can have drawing title drawn by and rearrange this really whatever way it is that uh, you like. I'll hit next insert it into the drawing, next, standard table style is fine, and finish. <clears throat> now this might be a little bit a um, little bit big for this sheet, I'm guessing it's quite a large table, there's a lot of data in there, um, so I might just, yeah it is a little big, I might just pop it off to the side there. Okay, so what we get is a table with um, every single piece of information um, about our, our file and our title block um, in one place. So if you ever need to really to kind of do a re review of a whole series of uh, drawings, instead of printing them out and going through them uh, individually with a red pen, you can just open this guy up. You can then mod or you can um, analyze all your drawing numbers, file names, issue dates, and um, really just check for simple things like spelling errors or duplicate numbers or, or anything like that. Now whether or not all of this information in this uh, in this table is going to be correct, you know for a fact that that's exactly what's written on them title blocks at this current mo moment in time. Okay, so then you can go and modify them or change them if you need to. With regards to the management side of things, you get um, who saved the drawing uh, last. You get the file size as well, so um, if you start going through this and you start seeing really huge numbers in there for particular files, you know that you might need to go in and investigate them and see why they're actually so um, so large. And also, at the end, your total editing time in minutes, okay, and this, this, will, this will keep updated um, as well. Uh, that total editing time is calculated when the um, cursor, or your mouse or keyboard is moving. Okay, so if you just leave your computer alone and go for lunch, it's uh, it's not going to count that time. Okay, so it'll give you a fair a fair idea of how long you've been working on in particular drawings. So, um, I think that was the last example I really wanted to to, to show. Uh, there's there's a, a load of other applications where you can where you can use this. In a lot of drawings, you'll be able to. Um, just jump into your existing drawings and start pulling information out of. Um, but in some cases, if you know these tools, what you can do is just kind of start designing and just start thinking ahead um, and just keep these tools in mind. So when you start creating blocks, you, you can now start adding that extra little bit of information that you might at some point uh, schedule as well. Okay. So um, now I'm just going to jump back. Uh, to my PowerPoint uh, here. Okay, so okay, so that was uh, that was all I wanted to kind of show you uh, on that, and hopefully that gives you a, a few ideas. Uh, next up, I just want to kind of have a little chat uh, about training. Okay, so I, I've been running training, AutoCAD training here um, almost full time for the last four years. Um, and in that time, I've, I've pretty much trained everyone from every sort of level, every discipline um, in every industry. Now, in that time, I've come across um, a lot of topics that, um, that are very much underutilized uh, within, within AutoCAD. Um, a lot of things that people, even experienced draftees, you know, 10, 15 years using AutoCAD have never really have never really used um, data extraction and data linking is one of them. So um, there's a few kind of common things in my uh, in my AutoCAD training journey. Um, phrases that keep on 
keep on basically popping up. Okay, so people saying that, that there's probably a quicker way of doing it, but I don't have time to sit down and figure out what it is. Um, also, if you don't know the functionality, uh, if you don't know AutoCAD can do something, you don't know what to Google or what to what to go and find training in. Um, a lot of people are also self-taught by somebody that was also self-taught. Okay, so you start kind of getting um, kind of slow workarounds and um, bad habits kind of passed down through from user uh, to user. Okay. So uh, for that reason, we came up with the AutoCAD Power Users course, and it's basically a collection of all the tools that I've found that have been massively overlooked, but are probably the most productive um, across across any industry. So this is the, the course. Uh, it kicks off in October um, around Australia and New Zealand as well. We'll be coming on board as well shortly. Uh, so it's a two-day training course. Um, you get a training guide. Uh, there's a manual that comes along uh, with it. You get a certificate also. Um, and basically just down at the bottom here we can see the different types of topics uh, that we cover. Okay, so uh, dynamic blocks. Okay, if you're not working with dynamic blocks, they're usually productive. Um, tool, um, creating more flexibility and intelligence uh, into your blocks just makes life an awful lot easier for you. Um, also working with attributes and, and data, adding information to your blocks, um, making them a bit more user friendly and adding a, a lot more smart to them, similar to the, uh, the doors that we looked at earlier. Uh, tool palettes. So tool palettes is basically a way of managing your uh, managing your CAD system. Um, you don't. It's the, by far the simplest way of customizing your whole AutoCAD interface, um, managing your block libraries, uh, but also kind of creating your own custom commands and workflows and uh, managing your company standards through a thing called tool palettes. Okay, I think this is probably one of the most powerful ways of doing it. Um, you don't need any coding experience or anything like that, so you just have to have a bit of a plan and you can set up these tool palettes very simply uh, yourself. We'll also take a look at layer management. Um, try and we've probably all been working in, in drawings that have got you know 500 layers in them. Um, how do we how do we rationalize that and how do we manage them and, and keep them um, keep them sensible and getting them to do a little bit more work um, for us with just a couple of clicks instead of um, turning bunches of layers on and off constantly. Um, we can we can kind of automate that. Advanced annotations, so we'll take a look at you know, multi-leaders, um, smart dimensioning tools, dimensioning sub-styles, uh, using tables effectively, so that's a lot of the stuff that I just covered in, in this webcast here. Uh, we'll also go how to create, create, um, create powerful um, drawing templates, okay, and that should be your first step into, I guess, CAD management, having a really good drawing template for your company. We'll also take a look at XREPs, uh, how to set up uh, sheet sets. And we also go into customization, so how to how to customize your interface, create your own menus, play around with the ribbon, um, how to how to set up your shortcuts on your keyboards, and uh, so on. On top of that, there's a the whole host of tips and tricks that kind of go on over the course of the two days. They're uh, they're fairly constant, um, and just a lot of stuff that I couldn't really pinpoint just now, but um, a lot of tips and tricks that uh, will help you out down the down the line. So um, our first course is in um, Perth on the 7th, and we're Brisbane the 14th, Melbourne on the 19th, and then in Sydney uh, with myself on uh, October 20, 21st. So um, I've already taught quite a lot of these these topics in a few kind of different courses that we've kind of had going on, and um, I get a I get a lot of reaction from them. I've had people in, you know, that have been using CAD for three months, um, and also people that have been using CAD for 10, 15 years, CAD managers and so on. And even with the, the very advanced users, there's still so many of these topics that they're, uh, they're not looking at. So here's just, just on the screen is just a few kind of fairly typical phrases that I hear um, after one of these, these courses. Okay. So hopefully you guys um, will be saying the same thing. Uh, if you do decide to come along uh, to the course. So if you want to uh, register or anything, you can contact us here at A2K. If you have any other questions about, about this particular webcast or for me, um, there's contact details just down at the bottom of the screen there. Now, um, I'm just going to take a look. Let's see. 
what we've got for our questions here. Um, let me make my screen a little bigger. Um, oops. Okay. Sorry, I'm just having a bit of an issue trying to see this question in here. My screen is all squeezed up. Okay, gotcha. Okay, um, can you change the formatting of the linked tables? Um, good question. Yes, I believe you can. There are some options. Um, there are some options when we're linking a table. Browse for that room schedule again. Open um, down at the bottom right-hand side of that of that table. You get these more options here, and there is some information in there for uh, formatting, even formulas, and uh, and so on. Okay, so um, you can use the Excel formatting or you can use the standard table style formatting. I think that's um, that's how that guy's guy goes. Um, I would have to just look into just a little bit more um, about that, but you do have some options in there for formatting, yes. Um, okay, another question was, is there an option to create name slash tag for each of these polylines so that we can avoid multiple layers or hatch types? Yes. Um, yes, there is. Okay. You will have to use the the hatch uh, hatch type. Okay. Uh, it's not quite going to work for polylines, but. If you were to extract the information uh, about, let's say, let's say, let's say you had each each one as a, a solid hatch pattern, and you had each solid hatch pattern as a different color. Um, let me just show you that option. I'm just going to hatch that solid. Okay. Now, when I go to my extract data tool and I create a new one next. Next, and this is a little bit rushed here, but I can take information from the hatch. There we go. Next, and what you'd be bringing through is information maybe about the color, but what you get here is uh, a display name. Okay, so you can actually change the. Let's uncheck all. Um, actually, pattern name. Do, do, do. I may have to rethink it, actually, um, because I'm thinking of a different kind of example here. But when you bring in a pattern name or any one of these properties, you can actually choose for the display name to actually be different. Okay, so I think there is an option there. We, we may have to have maybe the hatching in different patterns, and you give each pattern a different name. Um, something that I might have to have a little think about. But yeah, I think I think you could get it out of it using hatches, using different colors, and getting them to display, uh, giving them different display names in here. I think would do the trick. Now. Um, Okay, um, just looking at questions there again. Um, do, 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 do. I think I have lost my questions panel. It has disappeared somewhere along the screen. Okay, I think I think that's about it, guys. Um, if I could, uh, 
Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for, for now, guys. Um, if you've got any uh, further questions, please uh, just send them on to us. And uh, if you've got any questions about the course or of uh, the web, webcast, uh, just contact us here in A2K. Um, we really like your, uh, your feedback as well. If you've got any suggestions for other webcasts and things that you might want to see, um, please let us know. And Okay. Um, thanks for coming, folks. Um, hopefully, I'll see you all again uh, soon. Cheers.